with Jane. Preparations for the Summer Olympics are continuing in this country, of course, and NBC's chief financial correspondent, Mike Jensen, is here this morning on Staying Afloat with a look at some businessmen who are very much involved. And, Jane, they're involved as competitors, would you believe? If you think businessmen are all out of shape from those three martini lunches, it's not true. Take a look at this group. It's 6 o'clock in the morning, and John McGowan has already been on Long Island Sound for an hour. This morning, he's rowing with a... John McGowan is 48 years old, kind of rowing, sculling, they call it, just five... Okay, nice and steady. Neat. Coaching, he has become top 12 scullers in the country. To reach that status, he gets up every weekday at 4.30 in the morning and all day Saturday in rowing or working out with weights. Big goal. Into the rainbow, winning in the Olympics or having tried for it, then and, and, uh, the tremendous satisfaction of just having been involved in the sport. What's extraordinary about John McGowan is not just that he's an Olympic caliber athlete at the age of 48, but that he does it at the same time he holds down a demanding job in New York City as a television executive. He's vice president for program sales at WPIX. Janet, do we have clearance on those commercials for tomorrow night? Terry Anderson is another businessman athlete. He's 38 years old, a real estate developer in Dallas. All you have to do is look at his license plate to know what he wants. His sport? Rapid fire pistol shooting. He spends almost three hours a day on the pistol range. He just missed qualifying for the 1976 Olympic shooting team. He made it in 1980, but couldn't compete because of the U.S. boycott of the Moscow Olympics. Terry often works at his job until 8 or 9 in the evening to make up for the time he takes off to practice his shooting. Ready. He says the pistol shooting helps him at business more than it hurts. If I've got some worries about something that's going on within the business, and I come to the range, uh, after two or three hours of solid training or competition, as the case may be, that worry is, is cleared, and, and usually I have a solution to it. But well, she's terrific, isn't she? Edgar House is a youngster among chief executives, 30 years old. He's president of his own advertising agency. He's also one of the six best saber fencers in the United States. He has spent time recently training in Germany and in Poland, testing the competition. He works out with his coach at the New York Athletic Club. Distance, sir. Distance. What are you doing? He finds there are certain advantages that come with being the boss. I've had a lot of support from my staff here. Everyone knows that by and large this year, my top priority is to try to make the Olympic team. So I'm training as hard as I can. And uh, with a little bit of luck, I'll make the Olympic team. Roy Nelson wants the same thing. He's 34 years old, a civil engineer in San Jose. Is there a certain time of day that you like to travel? Uh, morning. Uh -huh. His wife, Julie, is a travel agent. She's 32. Between them, they've won a lot of prizes in their specialty, archery. Roy placed 10th in the Nationals and thinks he has a real shot at this year's Olympic team. Julie is shooting for 1988. To make time for practice, Roy works at the office from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Then he practices from mid-afternoon until dusk. He says Olympic fever has changed a lot of things for himself and for Julie. We hit exactly on the Olympic year when we were deciding that we'd have children, and so we felt it was better just to put it off a little bit longer. So there they are, four executives with demanding careers. Busy, successful, proving that business and athletics are not a bad combination. By the way, the businessmen were really disappointed about the Soviet pullout from the games, but John McGowan, the sculler, sort of summed up the overall attitude when he said that at the age of 48, he'd still be thrilled just to make the U.S. team. The rest of us feel like near-to-well layabouts. Thank you. Brian, back in a moment with Kate Capshaw after a message.